right, so let's complete our section here on uh, MOS capacitors and look at the uh, a large signal response uh, in these capacitors. All right, uh, so we almost made it through this table for the capacitors. Uh, next we'll look at MOSFETs, but let's conclude a, a few things on the large signal, especially deep uh, depletion appro uh, approximation here. So, so let's assume you uh, are running this uh, at, uh, at high frequency, and we've seen uh, a high frequency response of this um, um, MOS capacitor. Now imagine you really uh, have this structure biased like this, or you uh, start from zero bias and apply a, a massive large voltage into uh, the MO, uh, this capacitor, a large step-like voltage. Or, uh, that you uh, drive on uh, on top of, say, a, a DC bias. Okay, so we have a, um, a, a depletion region uh, we have calculated before, right? And now we're uh, driving the system uh, with a, a higher step voltage, and we're expecting then to find this charge in the system. Okay, somewhere because we are basically um, in. Uh, applying a voltage and we must have overall the field to be neutral across the device. So somewhere we've got to pile up charges um, uh, in the system to, to get again Gauss's law to, to set to zero as a total charge. All right, so let's apply this voltage. Uh, as mentioned before, um, the electrons in the inversion cannot respond fast enough. So um, they, they will just sort of sit there. And um, where do you get your, um, um, uh, the charge in the system? Well, the only thing that can respond uh, here fast enough are the majority carriers in the depletion region, okay? So you're starting to pile up charge here and increase the depletion region as a function of voltage. Okay, and those are the only carriers that can, can make it fast enough to balance the charge in the system. All right? Now, let's say you, you hold this charge for a while. So you applied a huge voltage and you followed this trend, right? Because the capacitor goes down like this. And then you hold this voltage. What should happen? So what can happen is that carriers, electrons, will eventually be generated, okay? And they will counterbalance the charge at the tail end and re rebalance the electrostatic potential in the system, okay? So that means while at first, on your first step, you will pile up charge at the deeper in the semiconductor, because that's the only charge that can follow rapidly the external signal. But as time evolves, then uh, more electrons can be generated and they can begin to pile up here and then change uh, the charge balance and rebalance the potential and then the, the capacitance will rise away from deep depletion you can reach a new steady state of the electron charge, okay? So we can calculate uh, a deep depletion region capacitance. It just follows the same square root as a function of voltage behavior we have calculated before. But once you ended this large signal response and put it into steady state again, not applying another system, eventually this capacitance will creep up to its high frequency value by electrons getting generated. Okay, so here is again the square root dependence as a function of voltage. This would be beyond uh, even beyond the threshold. Okay, now here we get to the uh, point I was trying to make that um, you can deeply deplete the semiconductor. But that is not, if you then hold the potential, this is not a, a steady state for the charge distribution. 
there is a way for the charges to otherwise balance in this capacitor that is a lower energy system. So then you can, as shown here in this uh, little animation, you can see how then over time the uh, system can relax back to its equilibrium, or not equilibrium, sorry, in, to its um, steady state um, um, uh, position, which would be here. Let me think. If there's no current flow, and you hold the potential just in the semiconductor, and the potential is flat, it doesn't change over time, um, the overall system is out of equilibrium because you separated the potential. But the quasi-Fermi level is flat, and you will have then the balance again and have detailed balance. So shockley reed hall ultimately will drive the system to a balance point that is determined by the quasi-Fermi uh, level in the semiconductor. So it actually, I was talking about steady state, meaning you have a, a step-like response in our applied voltage. So this is, say, time, and here is your T0 where you hit the switch, and you hit uh, a v, Vg, a delta Vg, but then you hold it. Uh, for the semiconductor, if this is really flat over time, you will read a, reach a quasi-equilibrium with a quasi-Fermi level. Okay? And that will be such that all the charge that was sitting here is getting piled up in here. And then the capacitance, again, reduces to its high frequency value. Okay? So that, of course, has to happen in a certain time scale. And again, the time scale of that is that of the carrier uh, generation um, in your system. That's the minority carrier lifetime in your system. Okay? All right. Um, again, if you uh, had a, this would be the high frequency point. Ultimately, if you are not modulating the system at all anymore, then you will ultimately generate enough charge here that uh, if you then began to modulate the signal, your small signal capacitance would again be that of the low frequency value. But what we're trying to say here is for the next step that you might apply in large signal, you would probably start here unless your frequency of applying huge pulses is again faster than the relaxation time, which cannot drive this system. Okay, so it's an interplay between different rela relaxation times and generation times. Okay, so it depends on the measurement frequency, how hard you punch the system which points of the capacitance you will reach. Okay. Let's talk a little bit briefly about real and ideal uh, CVs. So, uh, again here, the ideal point would be flat, um, pure oxide capacitance here for negative voltages, and um, uh, you decay as 1 over root uh, uh, voltage, gate voltage, and its capacitance, and if you're uh, hitting this at, at, at threshold and you're modulating it small enough, you shoot back up. Um, you can read off the flat band voltage and the, um, the, the threshold voltage here, right? So here's the threshold voltage, here's the, the flat band voltage corresponding here. And depending on how hard you ramp up the system and how fast you, you have different measurements, right? So we talked about deep depletion. And if the signal um, arises slower rather than a step function, that, depend, that, that will really show um, in your CV curve. So you can make time-dependent CV measurements and you basically uh, uh, see the relaxation time in your system or the generation time in your system. Okay. Now, if you uh, have a true MOS capacitor where you don't have uh, gates, uh, source and drain gates uh, close by, then you typically observe the high frequency capacitance. Um, but if you have uh, source and drain uh, close by, and again, here's the generation rate, um, 
uh, and that is typically slower than any typical measurement frequency, so you observe the high frequency piece. But if you um, have a way to inject carriers from a source in a drain that is um, more rapid due to the existence of a channel and really turn those into majority carriers, if you will, since they are injected here, um, then you can measure the uh, uh, low frequency capacitance as well and you basically uncover the details of charges that are sitting very close and not depletion region driven like here. Okay? All right. So, oh, quick question here. What happens if you shine light on an MOS capacitor? You generate carriers at a rate much more rapid than uh, the generation piece and they will float where? They float closer to the uh, oxide interface and therefore you reduce the capacitance. So, so your capacitance um, measurement should change. Okay. All right. Let's summarize the MOS capacitors. Um, there's in this calculation or these models here, we have assumed that there is no flow through the oxide. So we're in these devices do a characterization of the junction capacitance. The high frequency response is very different than the low frequency response. Different physics is involved. Different charge distributions are involved. Um, in a MOSFET, we typically only see the uh, low frequency response we, because we really populate uh, carriers right under the gate. And uh, deple uh, depletion is important for MOS capacitors that are, uh, but it doesn't really happen in MOSFETs. So those are the things to take away on this uh, section 29. I'll see you in the next one where we talk about MOSFETs. Thank you.